Hey folks, back with another live hangout here on Google Hangouts. Um, kind of running a little late today because uh, computer was kind of you know having startup issues and problems like that, and it's kind of getting bogged down. So I decided to restart it, and we're live today. Uh, I do have a little bit of a deadline today because I've got a lesson uh, coming up in about an hour and a half, somewhere around in there. So I can't just sit and ramble on today. Uh, hopefully we can get some good guitar playing in in the meantime. I'm not sure, but uh, we're going to try to. Uh, basically, the talking points today, if you look at the uh, event page, the actual event page, uh, which is where I would like you to go to if you're viewing this live, uh, is on the Guitarpreneur page. The other one on my Google Plus profile is just to let you know where the actual event page is, and I'll be checking that one for any comments or anything like that, so please be sure to check that out. Right now, we're just going to be talking about some updates, some guitar-related things, and some business guitarpreneur-related things today. Probably going to try to speed through that. One thing I will say is that I have been trying my best to get used again. I never was used to it in the first place, but I was trying to get my best to get used to the Jazz Pick, the 3, the Jazz 3 by Dunlop. I have noticed that it's got some awesome tone compared to you know, some other picks, like I was working with a, uh, the Dava Pick. I love the sharpness of it. I like the fact that it's you know a bigger pick. I'm still not used to the small pick thing here. I'm trying to get used to it. And but I just love the color of this one too. This Ernie Ball, uh, Ernie Ball, basically just a fluorescent heavy gauge pick. But uh, the tone of this one for electric guitar isn't exactly as crisp and clear as this Jazz Three is. So just been trying to work with some of that, trying to get some more of my chops down, working on some scale shapes last night, some different things. Been finding some cool videos. One in particular uh, is one that I recently found by Vinnie Moore. It's a full instructional, you know, guitar course on speed and accuracy, and I think maybe articulation. So if you look up Vinnie Moore, speed, articulation, accuracy type thing, he goes over modes, and he also goes over some right hand and left hand, you know, endurance exercises, and you know, just some cool little sequences that you can use on your, uh, you know, your practice sessions. Uh, also, another cool tip is uh, if you have a smartphone, which most people do, there's a cool app. Uh, I don't know if it's for Mac yet, but I know, I mean, for iPhone, but I know it's for Droid based phones, and that's called Guitar Mageddon. Uh, and on there, um, you'll be able to go to his YouTube channel. He has a YouTube channel based from that. And I can't remember exactly what it is, can't think of what the name of it is. But anyway, he's got some cool, you know, picking exercises as well that I've been working on. That uh, really, you know, helping me focus. I'll just sit down and it's just five-minute picking exercise, and you know, I could let me go ahead and look that up real quick, so we, I'm not, you know, trying to stumble on myself figuring out exactly uh, where that is. So I'm just going to go to my channel here real quick and see what my watch history looks like, so that I can find that real quick. Actually, I think it's in my watch later as well, so I'll check that. It's probably closer to being there. Than the other place. Um, it's a basic, basic five-minute legato. No, basic five-minute picking warm-up. The guy that designed and created Guitar Mageddon, that app, his name is it's it's called Shred Training. Okay, and if I you know play a little bit of this video, you can see what it's what it's uh, working on here. Uh, which hold on, I have to get my speakers going. The sound on this Mac is just, you know, you can confuse it when you're trying to get a, you know, an insert, and, you know, an input to a different audio one and all that stuff. I'm trying to get the sound working as well. So we're going to go ahead and get the sound working on this. Let's see if we can do that. There we go. All right. Okay, so let's listen to what's going on here. This is shred training. If you just look up shred training, it's one word. Uh, it's the Guitar Mageddon Developers YouTube channel. And here's what this video sounds like. So basically, you're sitting there doing an exercise over and over again to get your hand used to going faster, you know, and used to staying consistent. And he always goes back to, like we just heard, the, 
he always he'll go back to uh, another exercise within that, and then he'll go back to the, just the single picking. So it's a really good exercise just for picking, and this is just off the top of my head. This wasn't even the show notes, but uh, just something that you know, I've been working on, trying to get my uh, technique down and, and, and better, get better at it. But anyway, let's resume with this hangout here. And uh, so today's talking points. Let's just first of all talk about the update section. Uh, if you're following along, that should be in the show notes of this uh, hangout in the, in the event page. Uh, I've got a brand new interview video that is just released last Saturday, last week, and it's with Robert Baker. Now, I decided I just wanted to, you know, do an interview with him and approach him. He's a, a really cool guy, really a nice uh, guitar player, just as nice as he can be. And uh, he was really approachable, so I asked him if he wanted to do like an interview on YouTube, you know, live. Uh, well, it wasn't live. It was pre it was pre-recorded, and I used a program that I've talked about on previous Hangouts called Appear.in www.appear.in and uh, it's just a video conferencing tool that's totally free and easy to set up no installation required you just create a link share it and everybody can join you in the room on that browser it works with Chrome and uh, Firefox so I don't think it even works I don't know if it works with Safari or not but I know it doesn't work in Internet Explorer as of yet but uh, the new interview uh, part one released last Saturday Part two is releasing this Saturday. So I've decided to just go ahead and do it on Saturday since that's when I interviewed him. And whenever I reference this nice Saturday day, then uh, it will make sense. So <laughs> I decided to do that. So I've got that coming up, and it's got some awesome. Part one was just about his guitar, you know, guitar things, guitar-related questions and discussions, and, uh, you know, how he got pl started playing, how long he's been playing, what kind of guitar he uses, what kind of tones he uses. Part two is going to be talking more about the business aspect of that, and it's going to be about the guitarpreneur side, uh, so to speak, about running your own business, about keeping up with all your students. He's got 50 plus students. How does he keep up with them all? About you know time management tips, keeping a personal planner, and things like that, and just some other miscellaneous um, things that are going on. So I definitely check, uh, recommend you check out part one first. Just go to my YouTube channel and type in interview with Robert Baker or whatever, and it'll pull right up. Part two, check it out this coming Saturday, and uh, it will be available to watch. Uh, I usually release my videos around 10.30 in the morning uh, Central Time. So depending on where you are, it may be 11.30, it may be 9.30, who knows. Um, so I just wanted to tell you about that. I was really excited about it, really had a good time, and a one-hour interview ended up stretching to two hours. So I decided to break it into two parts. Now, I'm not going to say that this interview type thing is going to be a ongoing thing, I'd like to do it whenever you know something comes up and I have somebody I'd like to interview. I'd like to do that for sure. Schedule some of those in the future, but don't expect those to be you know a, a common thing. I've already got another interview in mind I'm with one of my great friends, based in the UK. He's one of my big time mentors when it comes to teaching guitar, and uh, he's kind of busy right now, so it's hard to get a hold of him. But I'm hoping that we can set that up pretty soon and give an, give an interview with him. So that's hopefully coming up. Uh, in the future. Um, so basically, like I said, just lately updates with me. I've been trying to practice some more, you know, sit down and work on some other things and um, just want to talk about that interview video. The next thing that I got on the uh, talking points, and I'm going to try to rush through this because I want to have time to play and I also want to have time to um, get all these points talked about, especially near the end. There's something I really want to focus on near the end of this hangout. And I'm hoping I'll have time to do it. If I don't, what I'll probably do is just end this hangout and come back either tonight or maybe within the next day or two, uh, have the rest of that hangout at, at night uh, and just get that done and over with. That may be a, a, its own feature segment. But we're going to try to force it in today if we can. So I'm just going to go real quick to the event page and see if there's any comments or questions. Uh, on the hangouts page, it's telling me that we have one viewer. Um, let's see if I can see who that is. Um, I'm not sure who it would be. A lot of times I can't really tell if that's me or not. But anyway, so I'm just going to go back here to the Google Hangouts. 
And I'm probably going to move that over so I can actually see these a little better. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about is um, guitar strings. Now, I've got a few video strings or string reviews videos coming up pretty soon. i uh, just uh, been working with Ernie Ball, some of those strings that they sent me. Uh, and they sent me uh, the ID20 Everlast, phosphor, or the ID20 Bronze Everlast acoustic strings. Uh, acoustic strings. And I, that review is completely done, uploaded. It's just got to be released within the next week or two. And uh, um, so that string review is coming up. Right now I am in the process of, um, I've got one more practice tonight uh, with one of my uh, bluegrass groups. And I'm using the Ernie Ball Phosphor Bronze Everlast. And they are some very decent strings. I've just finished, just about done with the review on that. I've had them on for about four weeks now. I think, and even though they look kind of corroded, which in the video, when you see the video, it will show you that. They look kind of corroded, and I talk about that, but the tone has lasted a pretty good while. I mean, the very good sounding strings, the Ernie Ball Everlast Foster Bronze. My review of those will be coming up after the 8020 Bronze review. Um, I just finished, you know, just completed like a, a couple weeks ago the Monel Strings review, so I'm, I'm trying to reach out to other string companies and see what I can do about getting more reviews and uh, also some free strings, you know, <laughs> can't hurt to have free strings as well. So, but I'm getting my, I'm giving my honest opinion on the strings. It's not like I'm telling them, oh, I'll say good things about you and all this stuff. They want my honest review, and I want to give you my honest review. So that's what I'm doing. But that leads me to a new string that I found recently, and it's exclusively available on Amazon.com. Been in touch with these people. Uh, from a company called Vibe Strings. I was just looking on Amazon. I think that's where I found it. I was on Amazon looking for something else. And you know how it always has the, you know, uh, you might like this or related products. Well, I, when I was looking for a different string or something, uh, this came up. And I looked at the reviews, and a lot of people, you know, have some good things to say about them. As far as I know, they're not coded, so I'm curious to see how they how they play. Um, uh, the reviews say they last quite a while. They, they're a good, last, long-lasting uh, guitar string. Even one review said that they don't die within a week like most uncoated strings. So I'm really curious to see what these uh, look like, what they're about. I know what they look like. I received a package in the mail, and I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick unboxing. I've already unboxed these things, but I never did a video of them. So here's the box that came in. I've already ripped the back of it off. So basically... We have, they sent me four packs of strings, okay? Now, I requested um, uh, tw 13 gauge strings, which are typically known as mediums. They actually sent me two packs of 13s and two packs of 12 uh, gauge strings, 12 to 52. Now, the interesting about the Vibe strings, and I'll go ahead and show it to you, this is what they look like. These are called Vibe strings. Uh, it says, uh, Let's see here. Replacement on the back, it says replacement guarantee. Don't exactly know what that is. High quality manufacturing control. Um, see, these have got like a little, little barcode on the back that I can't really see. Okay, here's one that doesn't. Replacement guarantee, high quality manufacturing control, packaged, packed per gauge number, six strings, six envelopes. Let's see, crafting the finest strings available with, with uh, let's see, worldwide, 40 years proudly dedicated to string making. 40 years. I've never heard of this company, so I don't know what the deal is with that. Innovative custom-made machines, world-class professional machines. Um, so you can check them out at vibestrings.com, www.vibestrings.com. Dot com. They're also on Facebook. Just look up Vibe, B I B E strings, and you'll find them. I've got five, they're, uh, both of these. I think hopefully, yes, they're both phosphor bronze. I've got the 13 to the 58. Yes, 58, not 56. That's what really amazed me and you know kind of impressed me about this string company is they go a step higher. They don't go just to 58. I mean 56 like most medium gauge strings do. They go to 58, which will last for a, even a deeper tone. Uh, might affect your, I don't know if it would affect your setup of your guitar or not, uh, and it looks like the rest of these string gauges here are not tampered with, like they're the same gauge as a regular medium set, only the top string is different, that's what it looks like. 
And I've got to say, they call the mediums what I actually consider, most people consider light gauge, the 12 to 52. Their heavies are 13 to 58. And uh, so it says 17% better sustained, three to half t times longer lasting. If they're not coated, I don't know. I mean, I haven't even opened one of these, so it looks like it's got like a little insert inside of them. Not exactly sure what that would be. And I'm going to go ahead and tear one of these open. This one's actually, I don't have to tear this open. It's already here. So I can look in here and see what this is. This is the first time of me looking at this. Uh, thank you for choosing Vibe Strings. Check this out. 50% off your next purchase of Vibe Strings. And it says, like the Vibe Strings and subscribe to our newsletter today to claim your 50% discount. Uh, Facebook.com slash Vibe Strings. So I'm definitely going to give these a try. Probably pretty soon, probably even before I switch to my next set of elixirs, because I really am curious to see what how these guys are going to hold up. Now this review probably won't be coming uh, for a little while because I've got the Ernie Ball ones in line. Plus I'm going to do uh, probably an elixir review. I may save the elixir review though. I may just do the vibe strings. Uh, it's not going to be really an elixir review. It's going to be a Comparison between Elixir Phosphor Bronze and Ernie Ball Earthwood strings. So I've done the Everlast and I'm about to do the Earthwood uh, compared to uh, the Elixir. And I probably may even do these and put this before the the uh, Elixir one because I'm very curious. This is a string I've never tried uh, and I want to try it out. And the cool thing about these are is what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do this right now, when the, when the actual review comes out, be looking for that because what I'm going to do is when the review comes out, I am going to give away a set of the medium, the 12 to 52 gauge strings. Uh, I don't use them that much. I'm going to keep one because I do have a guitar. My very first real guitar actually uses um, the light gauge strings. I can't do mediums on there because it's like playing with, I don't know, telephone cable wires or something. I mean, just the, the scale of that guitar is just way... Uh, off the mark when it comes to medium gauge strings. You just have to get a lighter gauge string. So I'm going to use one package of this for that as a backup. And then I'm just going to give one of these away. Uh, with, see the giveaway that I had last time, I don't know if it was just not big enough for people to bother with or people maybe, maybe people didn't see it enough or something. But I'm going to give the Vibe strings away and a package of Ernie Ball fluorescent picks, both in heavy and medium gauge. The medium is 73 millimeters, 0.73, and the heavy is 0.88. And I've even autographed it and put a little thank you note on the package. So one of these babies, along with the uh, picks, I'm going to give away. But that won't be until this actual review comes out. So when I when the review comes out, be watching for how to enter the giveaway. Okay, so that's going to be important. All right, so. That's Vibe Strings, and I wanted to share that with you and tell you what's going on as far as that goes. I'm getting a, some, uh, some very, very um, generous companies, you know, kind of helping me out with all this stuff. So that's what I'm going to be doing later on in the future is doing another string review for that. Uh, and they, the cool thing is uh, they did give me some, um, some special discount codes Um and I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to be using those. If I'll use them as like, you know, I don't know, um, you know, newsletter type thing or what. I'm not, I haven't decided what I'm going to do with those yet, but they did give me some cool discount codes. But as you saw, once you order a pack, I mean, I've got four packs here, and every single one of them has 50% off. Um, I don't know if, the th if you have to lock their Facebook page, though, then you could probably only do that one time. It ain't like you can keep going back and locking it, you know. And get a 50% discount. So I don't know how that works, but anyway, that's the new string company I'm I'm, I'm uh, looking at, and it would be really nice to finally get endorsed by a string company. Uh, I've been trying to get, I've been bugging Elixir until I'm tired of bugging them. You know, um, Elixir is my favorite strings, and if these are anywhere near as good, not being coated, then I'm going to definitely suggest <laughs> maybe getting an endorsement from these guys. I mean, it would be awesome to be endorsed by a string company. I mean, I mean, to play guitar, you know, it's some people, you know, um, are endorsed that are on YouTube. Robert is one of them. He's endorsed by several companies, Robert Baker. And we actually talk about that as well in this upcoming uh, video 
that's going to be releasing on Saturday, uh, the part two of that interview. But uh, that's the next thing I was going to talk about. The other thing I was wanting to talk about is, you know, some the Hangouts themselves, okay? Uh, the Hangouts, to me, sometimes I'll sit around and I'll be like, you know, I just want to do a Hangout. And it might be 8 o'clock at 9, okay? I don't want to announce it. I just want to get on here and just chill out with everybody. You know, whoever comes along and sees it, whatever. And that way, I won't have to spend time sitting here and trying to record a video or getting it edited. It will be on the spot. It will be live, and it will be already uploaded to YouTube. I won't have to record it, wait for it to render, wait for it to upload, and all this other stuff. It's a, you know, set it and forget it, you know, courtesy of Ron Popeil and the Rotisserie, whatever that thing was called. But anyway, I've been thinking about doing some hangouts. You know, every now and then I'll come up with a, a cool leak or something. And instead of doing a big professional, you know, type of, oh, here's this cool leak you need to do. Sometimes I just want to sit down and do a hangout and just do it, get it out while it's fresh. Uh, because a lot of my videos are released months, well, not months, but a lot of my videos are released, you know, weeks, a couple weeks down the line. And uh, a lot of it's not, it's not time dated. In other words, like the string reviews, they don't have a deadline. They can be, you know, viable any time of the day or any time of year. But uh, if I'm, you know, doing a review that, or doing a video that has, you know, some kind of time necessity, like a vlog of things that's happening recently, uh, then it's just hard to keep up with all that and have it to be, you know, so professional and all this. So I thought, you know, whenever I, I think you, you'll probably be seeing a few more of the just random hangouts uh, because I just want to sit back and just sometimes I play my guitar, sometimes I may just, you know, be practicing and want to chronicle my practice or something so that a lot of times that's when new things and new ideas happens when you're practicing and when I'm practicing that's really you know that's really a vulnerable moment because you'll get to see just how actual guitarists just how much they struggle with how good they play I mean you see me playing you know on uh, my guitar things and all that but you don't see the time and the work that it takes into you know developing these instructional videos and trying to get them out there and make them look professional and really be on your game. You don't see all the work it takes to going into that. And uh, I thought, you know, let's just do some random practices, some random, you know, here's a couple of licks I just learned today. That would be more fresh and not not so much dated. But I, I just like to be on top of these things a little bit more and not have things scheduled way out in advance that could be, you know, released right now. So I'm going to probably do a few more, you know, start doing some random hangouts. So don't be offended if I don't announce it or anything like that. Just, you know, stay tuned to the YouTube channel, and, and they'll come out when they come out, you know. Uh, but I'll still do hangouts like this, too, from time to time. I haven't been on here in a couple of weeks because really nothing new has happened, nothing, you know, worth talking about. Um, so, but I'll still have these kind of hangouts like this. So uh, let's get on to the next to uh, talking point, and that is uh, the updates. We're still on the updates. It's it's the um, my Texas Blues guitar page. Uh, I finally decided to update the actual page where you can purchase uh, my course, Texas Blues guitar. For the longest, it just had this huge, and I I modeled it after land different landing pages, different squeeze pages, and things like that, sales pages that you see on the internet where they'll have a video, and then they'll have tons of text scrolling down. Then you'll finally get an offer. And they'll have this and that. If, if you've any, ever done a product squeeze page, you know what I'm talking about. But uh, I actually decided to cut some of the, and trim some of the fat off that. I mean, just to me, it, it was an eyesore to look through that, and you could really easily get lost there. And also, lately, the actual uh, website, Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar.com, has been linked to like a, a little author's note. a uh, Welcome to Secrets of Texas Blues Guitar.com. Here's where you can go to find out all the details. And after testing that, it's been months since I've done that. And I've really noticed that my sales, my, the interest in the course has, has went down. And I think it's because they get there and nothing really appeals to them at first, and they probably don't want to spend the time navigating the site. I'm not sure. But when I was getting sales before, when people were getting interested, is when the actual first page that you clicked on was the actual sales page for the, the course uh, in DVD and in the download version. 
But the only problem with that I had is the template I was using, it was called the Recycler Template from uh, WP Landing Pages plugin or something like that. And at the bottom, I couldn't really edit anything on it. At the bottom, um, at the bottom of the, the template, it would say contact, you know, and all these other things, but you couldn't click on it. It would, it would click on it and direct you right back to where you were. So I couldn't edit any of that, and that really frustrated me. And so I decided, it, plus the, all the tabs were missing, so you couldn't really navigate to other places in uh, the website. So that was kind of irritating. I didn't want people to get stuck there and think that's all that I did was one course, and you know there's really nothing else to it. So I've decided I went ahead this past week and updated and cleaned the fat, trimmed the fat and all the, the jargon of the sales page off. And now when you go to secrets of TexasBluesGuitar.com, it will show you the, the sales page for the actual course, big old YouTube video there, uh, telling you what it's, you know, kind of what it's, what to expect. You know, there's some excerpts from the course. And you'll scroll down, and a lot of that stuff is gone. It's just basically, here's what this course is. If you're interested, here's who it's for. And it's got the add to cart there if you want. And it's also got an option for the download version. But the cool thing is, it's an actual page template from my actual WordPress theme. So now you can see all the, the tabs on the top if you want to go to someplace else like my blog or, or some other products I have. But the very first page is now the sales page, trimmed down, stripped down towards just what is essentially there that you need to know. Okay, so I just want to talk about that and uh, it's just easier, you know, to look at and it's a lot less clutter and uh, you can also navigate to other places. I've got a question here. I've got uh, a couple viewers here on and off. And the question is, where are you based out of? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Uh, there's, I've got the questions app or whatever here. So I'm going to click to answer the question. Okay, the question is by Ryan Blair. Thanks, Ryan, for watching today. It says, where are you based out of? Ryan, I'm actually out of, uh, based out of Tennessee. Um, I think it's, yeah, Middle Tennessee, around the Cookville area. And I've uh, been living in Cookville for uh, many years. Uh, my hometown is originally uh, Hanging Limb. They call Hanging Limb, you know, Monterey and Hanging Limb. And so I'm based out of Tennessee, and uh, that's, <laughs> that's about all I can say about that. Thanks so much for uh, uh, asking that question. And if you do have questions, you can look on the event page, and you can actually see there is a little thing that says Q&A live on the top right hand corner of the video. I've started in this recently. What the idea is is that when you ask a question and I select it, I go ahead and answer it. And then what happens is that it re it records as a question. And when you click on that question, when the event's done, it's supposed to go to that part of the, the video and where I answer the question. But lately it's not been doing that. So I don't know exactly why that's happening. But anyway, so uh, before I get into any more updates, let's just play around a little bit. You know, I feel like playing some. Time is ticking away, folks. So, once again, I'm using the Jazz 3. Still got my Ibanez RG4 EX1. Beautiful quilted maple. Loving this thing. I'm really dreading when I have to change the strings on this. I actually have some strings um, to change They're from Ernie Ball. They're, that's another string that I'll be reviewing whenever I get these things changed. It's the Cobalt Slinky. From Ernie Ball, and I'm looking forward to trying those out. It's supposed to be made of cobalt, which is magnetically supposed to be one of the most responsive metals out there. So it's supposed to get a lot more sustain and tone out of those strings. But these are the same Dunlop strings I've had on for ages. I love Jim Dunlop. It'd be nice to be endorsed by those as, as well. They're just awesome uh, for a good, cheap, decent string. I was messing around last night, and I actually, you know. Paul Gilbert has this way of playing an E chord where you play it, uh, kind of sounds like this. We take the chorus off so it doesn't sound too muffled. Let's see if I can get this right here. A little out of tune, but that's all right. Um, so I was messing around in D last night. It really sounded awesome when I was playing D. That really, that open A string ringing like that sounds awesome. And I was playing around in D major up here, and I all of a sudden came upon this. Just the, you know, the long A version of a D. 
But instead of having that high, high D here, I just did these two strings on the, let's see, we're on the 7th fret G string, first finger. The piggy is extended out to the 10th fret on the B string. And now I'm playing the A string down to that B string. And here's what I came up with. So it sounded really cool, and it also gets you in that position where you can play, you know, the major scale out of D. So that's really cool, you know, just, just something like that, like I was talking about, the random hangouts. <laughs> I want to be able to click on the computer and say, hey, guess what I just found out, you know. <laughs> so thanks to whoever's watching here. It just says there's two viewers. I don't really see who they are. Uh, it is not very good about telling you who it is on the event page. I hate that it doesn't say anything about that. I've got like six people say they were going, but I've got two viewers. And some of these may be the same viewers that started. Some of them may be, may be viewers that came on later. But anyway, thanks to whoever you are for viewing today. Uh, the, the last update I was going to talk about was on the, the Bluegrass Guitar Essentials course. Uh, please check out www.bluegrassguitaressentials.com. You can sign up for that totally free news, uh, non, excuse me, not a newsletter. It's a mailing list, okay? It is not going to be like a content-based newsletter like my totally free guitar newsletter is. Um, but I've, I've been releasing updates. I've been kind of behind on that lately because a lot of stuff is coming up. But uh, I've been trying to release, you know, any updates uh, that are coming up for the course via the newsletter. So I don't do updates on Facebook. I don't do updates on YouTube videos or anything like that. It's, if you want any updates regarding when the course is going to be released, uh, as far as like the little webisodes I talked about in my last hangout, the little webisodes, uh, they're going to be released in that format, then you'll need to subscribe to that uh, uh, mailing list at www bluegrassguitarcentrals.com. That just saves me a lot of hassle from having to go to one place to another place to another place and post all these updates. Now, when the actual course is released, then yes, there will be, uh, I will shoot that out to all my networks and things like that when the actual course is available and when the actual webisodes are available. But uh, first access comes to those who are subscribed to that mailing list. As far as any updates go, uh, I have been uh, trying my best to um, do a lot of proofing on some tabs that's come up and uh, begin the neck diagrams uh, for the course. Um, getting way behind, it keeps things keep pushing that uh, behind, so I've definitely got it on my calendar to do start some of that tomorrow um, and work on some of that stuff this week. Um, let's see, the other updates regarding the course, I just had one, I can't remember what it was. Basically, I'm just doing my best to try to get the first two episodes out as soon as possible. The first one, um, it's 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 nearly completed. The first episode is nearly completed. Um, and if you're on the mailing list, you're going to have a, a really nice surprise about that uh, whenever it's available for release. Um, the second one, the video editing part's done. Working on the third one, almost done. You know, trying to get this stuff done. Um, but basically, I'm just doing my best I can that I that I can to try to maintain steady pace on getting that done. And it's starting to you know compact a little bit because there's more things that I'm having to do. Uh, it's not just all of my my virtual assistants now doing this. There's more things that I'm having to be involved in. Uh, and it's a big project. It's huge. It really is. I've been working on this probably almost a year now from outline to completion, and it's not completed just yet, but it takes a lot of time uh, if you're going to want to do any kind of course or anything like that. If you want to do a full-scale, full-length series, uh, then yeah, it takes a while. It takes a while to do, especially when you're having to do it on your own. It's not it's not easy. It's not for the faint of heart, but it is worth it because I can see the end. Begin with the end in mind, as Stephen Covey says, I can see the end product, and I know it's going to be a big hit because I, I've been watching the videos, kind of proofing all the video edits, and I'm sitting, going, I'm sitting there going, these people are going to really love this content because 
if they really apply it, it's going to help them be better bluegrass guitarists, and it's going to help them be better all-around guitarists because it talks about even the fine techniques of picking and, uh, you know, all the little, other little nuances that, you know, hardly anybody ever talks about. So there are some updates for you on that. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about is guitar-related things. Now I'm going to go ahead and take me a drink of Hawaiian Punch in a Powerade bottle. I'll whip my whistle a little bit. So guitar-related. I am very swiftly approaching um, the two-year anniversary mark for my totally free guitar newsletter. Okay. I have been working on this thing since uh, 2012 in May. 2012 is when I started it. Just a few months after I launched the course, I wanted to get something out there. I wanted to get something to update people with, and it's mainly been a content dra content driven based newsletter. Every newsletter you receive receives uh, you, it, it comes out weekly, and you receive you know high quality lesson videos that aren't available to the public on YouTube. I have many unlisted videos on YouTube that uh, nobody but the newsletter people have access to. And that's you can find out more about that by going to www.secretsoftexasbluesguitar.com slash newsletter. And that's coming up. And I recently redid some things. I recently redid the design of that newsletter. Now, the way this works, if you're not familiar with newsletters, uh, this is called a an autoresponder. And uh, you can go through newsletter companies such, like, such as MailChimp, uh, Constant Contact, Infusionsoft, AWeber. I personally use iCon. I see no point in switching right now. It's it's good for what I need it for. But what you do is you you put a series of emails into this system that, as often as you want it to, will shoot out an email to your subscribers, and it will be a function as a newsletter. So every week or biweekly every month, every quarter, whatever you set it to, it will set it up to release these uh, emails automatically. That's why it's called an autoresponder, okay? So we have the autoresponder that I have, I've been doing it uh, on a weekly basis. And what happens is when you sign up, you will get that newsletter and everything, uh, all the videos from the very beginning from two years ago. You'll start from the, the, the beginning. So if you ever unsubscribe, Think about it twice because if you ever resubscribe, it will start you back all over again. And most autoresponders are like that. Most of your uh, people that you know that are really savvy on the internet, if they have a newsletter, it's an autoresponder because that allows them to create a bunch of content and kind of space it out so that their their subscribers don't get overwhelmed and overtaxed with reading all these emails. But you will be getting it, and it will be go going on for about once a week. And that's going to be lasting you when you subscribe from day one. Now I've got two years worth of content uh, built into that. And that's a, a huge, amazing feat to say that somebody like me can do something like that. Um, and I decided recently, since I'm focusing a lot on my bluegrass guitar course and wanting to do more YouTube videos, because that's where most of my traffic is, that's where most of my you know subscriber base is and my customer base is, uh, we want to focus more on YouTube. So instead of doing a weekly video, uh, what I've decided to do is to do it like um, in a once a month format. And that frees me up to create like more, like maybe a batch of four or five videos, upload that once a month, and then I'm done for that month. And I can come back close to the end of the month and get ready for next month. Okay. So that allows me a lot more freedom so that I can use that time, instead of having to do it weekly, that time to go ahead and focus on um, creating more content for YouTube, um, more content for any websites I may develop in the future, more time for practicing and just playing, because I'm getting tired of having to do all this business maintenance stuff on, on online and not really honing my craft. All the... the um, all the really exceptional uh, people out there that are successful on YouTube and you know in, in guitar like you know Steve Vai, Paul Gilbert, Joe Satriani, Ingve Malmsteen, they play guitar. Now granted for them to be noticed and seen and, and, and successful they've got to do more than just play guitar. They have to tour, 
They have to set up bookings. They have to sell albums. They have to record albums. They have to manage their website. They have to manage their distribution of the content. They have to do updates. They have to all this stuff that you don't see. All you see is the awesome playing they do, right? And they do that because they have people around them to help them to help them facilitate that. And I've been noticing lately that I don't have I've not been utilizing the people around me in the virtual assistants right now. They're kind of yes, they are you know kind of um, stuck working on the bluegrass car, guitar course because that is priority one. Okay, with me, and I told you that earlier on the uh, hangout I had earlier this year about my focus for this year. But uh, I still, I still feel like I need to back off a lot of the business side of these things and maintain websites and getting everything done, and just play more. Uh, that leads me to the next thing. Basically, the newsletter. Those my plans for my newsletter was just to do it on a monthly basis now. But when you start from day one. You will get something every week because that's just the way it's it's uh, set up. Then after that, two years go by and you've had all this content, it will uh, start doing it on a monthly basis. Okay, so that kind of gives us both time to maybe if you was interested in other things and and uh, you want to learn from other people or have other new newsletters you're subscribed to, that'll give you a little bit of breathing room as well. Um, I want to do like a probably a blog post or teaser of some kind that was kind of like a collage of all the videos that I've done or at least a bunch of them that I've done so that you can see all these you know the, this content that's in the newsletter and that way you can instead of me saying here's all this content you can judge for yourself if it's content that you want to subscribe to um, for the most part it is electric guitar stuff uh, and when I started it out it was mainly for blues but later on, it gets into things like chords and uh, the cage method, some theory things, and all kinds of different things for electric guitar, different tips and tricks and strategies and things like that. Uh, but it is mainly electric guitar based. So I want to set up something like that for the two-year anniversary. It's a big milestone for me. I mean, it's it's a it's a big deal. Uh, but that leads me, as far as just playing, it leads me to the next talking point concerning guitar-related stuff, and that is, man, I just want to play. Um, I just want to play guitar, and I, I watch, and I mentioned this earlier about Steve I. They play, they you know, they get all this other stuff done, but they focus on playing. The people on YouTube, like Rick Graham, uh, Robert Baker, they play. They play covers of songs. They play licks. They don't sit there and talk like I do. They don't sit there and explain it. Sometimes they just play, and that creates content, and that creates content that people want to watch. And I want to start doing a lot more of just playing. Not a lot of commentary, not a lot of you know jargon and mumble jumbo stuff. Playing and just enjoying the process of playing. That involves recording more videos in the style of Batitude or in the style of the MXR demo pedal for the song Sailing that I put out. I want to do some actual songs, cover songs of, uh, that I've been looking at that I really enjoy listening to and would love to enjoy attempting on guitar. And one of which is my va favorite Joe Satriani song of all time. And that song, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, is called Love Thing. If you look at the best version by far I've seen him do is on the uh, Live in San Francisco uh, two-disc DVD concert. And it is amazing. When I heard that song, I mean, I couldn't get enough of it. I had it on repeat over and over and over and over again in my CD player. And recently, I've been back to it. I learned how to play it a long time ago, but I've been refining it and uh, decided, you know what, I want to do a cover song and do it the same style that I do the backing tracks, where you can download the free backing track off my website. What I'll do is I'll find a free backing track for that song or for other songs that I'm interested in learning, and then post a video and then lead you to where you can download the backing track on my site. So I just want to do a lot more just play style videos, you know. That, that would be in combination with the, the random hangout videos I mentioned earlier. That would be, you know, just maybe me sitting down, turn on the computer, recording things and say, oh, here's this cool lick, you know, that I've been working on, or here's a song I'd like to share with you, or just sitting down and do the, you know, the more edited and more professional looking things, like I mentioned, Batitude and uh, some of the other ones, and doing a uh, the song 
in an actual edited atmosphere that makes it look nice and professional and things like that. So that's what i got coming up. There's a few other Satriani songs that I'd like to do, and uh, not only just songs, but there are bits and pieces of songs that I'd like to work on. Right now I've had I've been listening to, and I don't know if I'll do this or not, but I've been listening to a lot of uh, the Alive in an Ultra World CD by uh, Steve I, which came out at the same time as uh, Satriani's Live in San Francisco album and uh, concert. It's amazing. It's one of my favorite Steve I albums of all time. It's a two-disc set, completely brand new material that he wrote while in different countries back in 2001. It's definitely a must listen. Go check that out. It's called Alive in an Ultra World by Steve Vai. But there's a song on there. It's number two of CD1, track two. It's called Burning Rain. And uh, it's a very, very fun to listen to song. And the very first part of the song, he does a, a, a cool little... Uh, sounds like he's doing a riff in octaves, and uh, I was, I've been wanting to do songs to where I could be like, well, I'm not going to do this whole song, but there's a cool leak in this song that I thought I'd like to share with you guys, you know, and just do that. So I got a lot of ideas, and I just want to run with them, you know. I, I don't want to feel like I have to have permission from the YouTube community because I know uh, they probably want to see more of me playing and less of me talking, and uh, I understand that. And today I've been rambling and not really playing a whole lot. But a lot of this for me is, is like, a, once again, the vlog. It's on the Guitarpreneur videos on the vlog playlist because it's, it's a chance for me to sit down and vent and kind of work out, you know, processes and things like that that's going on. So uh, that's basically it for the guitar-related stuff. Let's play a little bit more, mess around, so maybe we can think of something going on. And I really want to get to what is very, very important to me on this Hangout. Now, as far as the frequency of Hangouts, I try to do them on Wednesdays. This week I did it on Tuesday because I'm, I'm busy the rest of this week trying to get everything in order. I've recently begun a, a workout program at my local, not the YMCA, but uh, um, just another recreational facility here in town and trying to, you know, lose some weight, trying to get in shape just because of the quality of life, if nothing else, you know. Uh, but I wanted to do that and wanted to get out and be more active and things like that. And that's now taking a block of my time in the mornings on Wednesdays. Uh, and I'm dead tired by the time it's done. And I don't feel like doing a, hang like a hangout. So uh, Wednesdays are now. I'm not sure how the hangouts are going to work on Wednesdays. So it's just whenever it happens. I'll announce the, the main hangouts when they happen. But like I said, the random ones will just be as they come. So let's do some more guitar stuff and then I'll get on to the main point of this Hangout, in my opinion, uh, here in just a second. So, I uh, hope you guys have been enjoying some of the uh, other YouTube videos that's been coming out regarding the Digitech X Edit software. Um, though it's, it's very an awesome program if you have a Digitech pedal, and I'm not sure if other co companies have that as well. They must have some kind of software interface of their pedals. But uh, the X Edit makes it so easy to customize your settings and to you know change things on the fly instead of me having to pull the, the pedal down here, having to push things and remember I had the combination and all this. You just click on what you want. If you haven't checked that out, go check out the Digitech X Edit uh, overview and setup video that just came out this week. Next week will be the final, uh, the fifth I think, fifth and final video. I meant to mention this earlier, and I'll get into playing of the Bluegrass Guitar Essentials sample videos. And what that video is going to be about is, there's no tabs or anything like that, that video is going to be an overview of what the course is about, and what is in the course, okay? And uh, it's going to be basically a stripped down version of one of the hangouts that I had, I don't know, a couple months back, uh, that talked about, that had the thumbnail as an image of a big survey. And it's where I talk about, you know, um, what was requested when I sent out a survey about a year ago on what you'd like to see in the Bluegrass Guitar Course because I'm considering making one. And that whole survey, that it's a screencast hangout video, and it shows every little detail of everything that people requested and interacted with me on. So that is there, and uh, that's a, an exhaustive view of what the next video is going to be about. And I'll leave a link to that video series, the little hangout I just referred to, on next week's video. I think I've already posted it on there. So that uh, if you want to, you can watch it as well. But 
So the next one is going to be the fifth and final one, installment, and hopefully after that we'll soon start seeing uh, the webisodes from the actual course release. That's the way I planned it, is that once these are done releasing, you can have regular content from the actual course. So right now off the top of my head, I can't really think of a lot of things to play. Been messing around with some tones, you know, trying to get some um, some better tones. This one is the flawless tone that I referred to on that Digitech video. <laughs> We put a little chorus on there last night. Put a little delay on here. Out of tune, like I said. Where's that D again? I've just been playing D, uh, just messing around in D lately. So, thanks to everybody that's watching. Uh, once again, I don't see any comments or anything like that. Um, so, I'm not exactly sure who's viewing or anything like that. So, there is a question and answer section if you're looking on the event page at the top of the video. Um, it's going to be at the top of the video, and if you don't see it, then you're on the wrong page. You need to go where it says uh, on the details section. Go to where it says official site. That is going to take you to the actual event page. And when you get to the event page, you can see on the video there that's streaming, it says on the top right part of that little video, Q&A. And you can click on that Q&A and ask me a question if you'd like to do that. So the last thing we'll talk about involves me putting the guitar down. It's going to be a guitarpreneur related question, or not a question, but uh, guitarpreneur related topic. And I'm going to go ahead and shut down my pedal over here. And go ahead and shut down the program that I'm using with it. Okay, I think we're good to go. Make sure my sound is still working. Yes, it is. Okay, so the last thing we'll talk about today is, and I'll have a few minutes to do this before I have to jet out of here and go do a lesson and then practice, is... The importance of keeping a business journal for the purpose of uh, maintaining your vision, your vision. Okay. Now Proverbs 29:18 says, "With where, the, where there is no vision, the people perish." Okay. And basically, in this sense, vision to me is getting a vision of what your goal is in mind and working towards that vision, taking steps to achieve that vision, whether it be by outlining by using a, a mind map, which is one of my favorite ways to, to, you know, explode my ideas on the page and brainstorm. Whatever it is, you have to take small steps to get to that vision. And when you keep a business journal, it's really awesome to look back and see where you've come. You can also write down your ideas, write down your, you know, mind map sketches, things like that. Don't feel that because we're in such a technology-laden society that we have to have gadgets to keep up with things. I am a big fan of good old-fashioned, you know, regular size books. I'm a good fan of, of good old-fashioned paper and pencil. Uh, speaking of both topics, this is one of the, the books that I recently did, or not recently, but a while back did a video on uh, some of the books that I own that you should read. The Back of the Naked by Dan Rome. Check that book out. He talks about, you know, the importance of of doodling and using visual uh, means of communicating things to people and just how easy it is to do that and a business journal is great for that I also have another sketchbook that I use just for sketching like that but you can do that 
in a business journal if you want to as well. So let me give you an idea of what my business journals have looked like over the past several years. Uh, the first business journal looks like this. It says business dreams and goals number one. This is a simple top flight, one subject, college ruled, 70 sheet of paper, uh, you know, notebook. Okay, just a simple, you know, back to school type, you know, 50 cent thing. Um, and it's plenty enough places to write, you know, things like that. And I started this journal on 2010 or 2010, May the third of. 2010. So this was while I still had a job. It's still while I was miserable at my job. You know, it was right around the time that I actually started the Texas Blues guitar product stuff. That everything is documented here. Even the journey, the trip I took there is documented, and it's awesome because I go back and look at some of these things. Okay, um, the first thing I have on here is, you know, a simple debt reduction plan that I was trying to do to reduce my debt when I was uh, starting this business journal. What are the steps to starting my own business? And I put down here, you know, as a guitar teacher, well, I got to switch to the day shift so that I can teach students at night after school. Uh, I got to start teaching. You know, I've got to do that. I can't just, you know, say I'm going to teach and not teach. And that was one of the hardest things, believe you me, that I ever did was start teaching guitar. Up to that point, I've been teaching on YouTube for about three years. Started on YouTube about 2007. And up to that point, I've been teaching on YouTube about three years. But that's still different than teaching one-on-one, -on -one, you know. And I've learned that in these past couple of years since I've been teaching, three or four years, that I have learned so much on how to approach other people and other people's problems on guitar, other people's, you know, hang-ups or difficulties. And just by sitting and observing somebody, and you really, as a teacher, you really have to be in tune with what you're doing, because to you it's just second nature, and you don't think about it. Uh, but you get into—I even do this still. Sometimes I'll do the easiest version of what I think can be a cool lick, and then I realize, wait, I can break down that further. I can break it down further. So I'll go back and break it down even more. So it really allows you to get outside your own perspective, perspective and getting someone else and see how they're viewing you. Another thing that I did, you know, put a business policy in place, interview clients, advertise and market your services, you know, get a website up, things like that. Uh, just skipping through this, you know, some different, just talking to myself kind of things, just, you know, just talking out loud. What do you want? Well, you know, what, what I want in terms of for uh, myself as far as financial goals go, and I put down here all these other, you know, points, massive, you know, bunch of bullet points that I put down. And this is not, a business journalist is not an everyday thing. It's just when you are struck with inspiration or you want to you want to sit down and vent, get some things off your mind, you have some business ideas, sit there and write that stuff down. I mean, seriously, if you don't write it down, if you're an, an entrepreneur and a creative type personality like I am, ideas come at the drop of a dime. All right? I mean, they are coming all the time. So I'm telling you, you got to write these things down or you will forget them, okay? Now, I've got another question here. Hey, Eric, can you do a video like this down the road? 100% focused on Tony Rice, his style of playing, licks, etc. Let me select that question. Once again, the question is, hey, Eric, can you do a video like this down the road? 100% focused on Tony Rice, his style of playing, licks, etc. Haven't really thought about that. Uh, there are, whenever I think of Tony Rice licks, I definitely put them on YouTube. Uh, if you'll type in on my YouTube channel Tony Rice, all kinds of licks will come up. Uh, the reason I probably would not do that is because I would feel like I'm being a little repetitive because I've already covered a lot of that stuff. Now it may be a good reason to do it is because it would consolidate a lot of these licks in one place. So that's definitely something to consider. Um, what I'm going to ask you to do, Greg, if you would, go to my YouTube channel and there's a playlist on the very uh, top that says guitar lesson suggestion request box or something like that. Please go there and leave that same comment in that on that video because that's where all my comments are that uh, I consolidate them right there so that I can go back and find them in one place. If you leave a comment here and then there's another comment left somewhere else and after 400 videos, comments flying at you everywhere, it's hard to consolidate all these and make sure that you get to every one. 
So that's something I'll definitely consider. A lot of people ask about Tony Ross things. And if you're hungry for some Tony Ross licks, I'll tell you right now, there's a video series that I did. Uh, and you, you can go to my YouTube channel and search this out too. It will keep you busy for months, okay? Depending on what your level is. And it's the series on his song called Originally Untitled. I did a four-part video on that. And I did White's uh, part, and I did Tony Rice's. He did two parts. I did the rhythm section. I mean, it's loaded with Tony Rice style licks. Go check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, yeah, I do need to get back on these hangouts to more playing. I originally started this because there was a, har a guitar hangout where people were just playing together, and they would discuss what they were playing, things they learned. And it just developed into this, you know, guitarpreneur thing because, to be honest with you, I haven't had many people to, just to come in and, you know, play guitar along with me. I don't know why, but uh, but it hasn't happened. But anyway, I'll, I'll definitely consider that, Doug. I mean, uh, Dugan, Greg Dugan. So I appreciate that. I'm going to go ahead and quickly if this is done. So back to the business journal. Thanks so much, uh, Greg, for your question. The business journal, I even uh, on books that I read. Uh, notes from the Millionaire Next Door. So a, a bunch of cool notes that I got from reading the Millionaire Next Door or, or listening to it on audiobook. Have yourself a pen and paper handy when you read uh, books. You can write down the main points, and that way you don't have to go back and read the whole book again. You can just go back to your notes and say, okay, this is this is what I need. Cuts out a lot of time. Uh, notes from the Millionaire Mind. So I had notes from that. Uh, pros and cons of working on the day shift and the split shift. You know, this was back when I had a job. Um, some different things like that. Um, I'm just kind of, you know, switching through a bunch of these different ones here. I think I actually have when we was when I first got married to my wife uh, back in 2012. I don't think it's I don't think it's in this notebook. It's in the, the next one, the next journal. I actually recorded all the things for the wedding in that notebook. I know it's not business related, but it's all I had at the time. So, and then each one is is titled. I leave the, the first line blank. I skip a line, then I start writing. Each line is left blank so that I can go back and when I'm done writing, write a title for what this one is about. So I'm telling you, keeping a business journal is just a very, very smart thing to do. I mean, all my ideas are chronicled in this, and I can go back and look at this at any time. Sometimes I do just for reading. Instead of taking a business book along with me, I can take a business journal and, and get through that. Maybe maybe a goal would be once a year read uh, one business journal for that year, you know, and it would probably spark some imaginations. There may be some ideas in here that I forgot about that I had, and I can go back now that I've experienced more and learned more, I can go back and say, hey, this might be worth uh, pursuing now. So, Here's a big one that says success, big title here, success. So once again, definitely check these out. Now, the um, here are some ideas I had for my business, uh, my Texas Blues guitar, some ideas, the outlines, things like that, uh, what, and there's some actual website layouts. I actually drew what I wanted my layout to look like and things like that. Um, you see, here it is, Secrets of Texas Blues. DVD outline, so it, it tells you, it tells me right there what my outline was going to be. Okay, and then on the very last page, I have the last entry, and that was uh, 2011. So uh, a little over a year, I kept this journal, and then, like I said, it's not an everyday thing. Now the second one was just like this. Um, this one's a top flight. The second one is called Business and Dreams, Business Dreams and Goals Number Two. And it looks like this. It's a green one. It's the same thing. Same, uh, you know, one subject, college rule, 70 sheets. Now, I recommend, uh, usually I do this with every journal that I create now. Uh, I'll always leave the first page blank. If I want to go back and write a table of contents, I'll do that. This one, was when I was getting really getting into Dan Rohn, and uh, I was uh, actually doodling some sketches for some ideas for, you know, uh, different sketches that would mean different things. Uh, to use within the business journal. So I've got different uh, things like uh, this one started in July of 2011. My next idea, let's host a concert with guests for songs that I've written in Dogwood Park, which is a park here in uh, Cookville, Tennessee. So, and I, you know, always wanted to do like an event, like a workshop or something and, you know, get everything together. 
And that's something I could do later on down the road, too. That's something to, to strive for. Uh, this one's called Make It So, and it was uh, uh, Captain John Luke Picard from Star Trek The Next Generation. And it's just me writing things, encouraging myself to, you know what, get out there, get it done. You can do it, you know. It's, it's a good, encouraging thing to have in front of you. Um, so I was reading, you know, I can look back and see when I was reading certain books, like 48 Days to the Work You Love. Uh, get motivated. I went to a get motivated seminar uh, back in 2011. I wrote notes down for that. Um, here's once again. Uh, this is the T the Texas Blues Guitar sales page idea that I had for creating the layout for the website. What it's going to look like. Here's the big video. And then you got the headline, and you got some text here. And it kind of ended up turning out similar to what I what I've got now on SecretsTexasBluesGuitar.com. Um, you know, the different add to cart buttons, what they're going to look like, you know, things like that. It's a really good page to just sit down and do. And here's a uh, infrastructure that I created to give me an idea of what it's going to do. So you've got the sales page, which goes down here to, you know, option one. Here's the first package. Option two, here's another package, and it has a lot more features and things like that. And the shopping carts in here and, and the, the, just the whole infrastructure. So... I, like I said, this is a mind map. I do a lot of mind mapping, and I, like, I prefer to do it on paper, but it's cool to have, you know, a software like XMind, which is what I used for things like that. Here's here's the wedding. Uh, like I told you, I bookmarked this, clipped, clipped it so that I would know that it's a wedding, uh, wedding uh, pages. Um, now here, you're talking about mind mapping. Let me just go ahead, and here's a milestone. This is awesome when you can write something down later go back and check it off as an event that you accomplished as a milestone. For example, here is one milestone and this is creating my own product, Texas Boys Guitar, and releasing it on DVD. And I had the infrastructure to that too using my supplier. And here is what the proof is. This is the insert for my Texas Boys Guitar DVD. So that's great to go back and see, hey, this is something that I accomplished all right, that was written down. It's almost like a self-fulfilled prophecy type thing. It's really interesting uh, to know that thing, to know that stuff ahead of time. Uh, this one is yet to be completed. Once again, here is a mind map of basically what I was spending my time on at the time and how I wanted to make sure that I take advantage of the 80-20 rule. Spend 80% of the time on the 20% of things that actually make a difference and are actually mattering in my business. And this is what it looks like. Okay, this involves all the social networks, all the website, all the other things that I do. This is what I ended up with, and I can always go back to look at this and say, am I still doing this? Am I still focused on this? One of these days, I would like to actually maybe create this, these business journals, and maybe even create a book out of it to help other people, you know, see where my success comes from or see the ideas that I had and how to implement these things. I actually sat down and listened to Eat That Frog on YouTube, and as I listened to it, because the full book is available on audio on uh, YouTube, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy talks about overcoming procrastination for good. Awesome, awesome book. you got to check that out. I actually wrote down the, the you know the 20-something points he had for that, so now I can actually go back and read this instead of having to read through every single aspect of that book or listen to the whole course again uh, on the Internet. I can go back here, and now I've got notes for for myself. Uh, marketing strategies, you know, things like this that you can put in your business journal. And this is just recent. This was back in uh, January of this year. So this one goes from July 2011 up to present day because right now I am, this is some notes I had from a webinar with uh, uh, Ray Edwards here recently. Here's another mind map. Business, business systems product flow. And that's what it looks like. You know, here's, uh, here's you create the product, me, versus find a product through an affiliate link and distribute it that way. And here's all the pros for that. Well, I don't have to create it. It's already created. All i got to do is market it. On this one, I've got to create everything, and here's when you create it, it goes to this, and when that happens, it goes to this. And So, I mean, I sit down and sketch my ideas like this all the time, and it's very handy, you know. And this... Don't be discouraged when you see something like this because all this started from a single thing. Go check out mind mapping on YouTube and they'll tell you. You start with a single idea, draw a circle around it, and then branch off from there. And then this this idea may have another circle and then 
it'll have subtopics that you can branch off of that little circle. Before you long, you're getting something that looks like that, okay? So, I mean, the last one here was on this month, April the 3rd. It was Friday. And uh, I, have, I didn't write a title on this one. I need to go back and write a title. But basically talking about books I've been reading, how to build systems, uh, which is uh, um, basically the books that I've referred to on my books that I own that you need to read, part three, I think it is. It's the latest one that I've done. And, you know, talked about, you know, just some ideas that I had. Um, and books that I'm reading now, so that I'll probably do a, a video on shortly. So that's the end of this one. Now, what I wanted to also stress is these are my journals and some excerpts from my journals. The other thing in the last few minutes here I'm going to address is, you know, the last two journals I've had look like this, okay? And yes, granted, there's a lot of room to write all those mind maps and stuff in, but these are kind of bulky. Am I going to take these with me wherever I go? Probably not. I mean, these have been sitting in the house for a while. I actually took this one with me for a while so that I would have it with me when ideas came along, and I haven't done that in a while either. So I, I decided to invest in another journal, and they can come in different sizes. Whatever you want that works for you is perfect. I don't suggest using the little small, you know, journals about this big. You know, you're not going to get much out of that. I suggest using a medium-sized journal, uh, and this is one that I was talking about, about the size of a paperback book, nowadays paperback books, and that's uh, these right here. Uh, I've learned about these through Michael Hyatt. You go to michaelhyatt.com, and I learned about these specific journals through him. These are called ecosystem journals, and that's what they look like. Now, this is the... Um, soft back version, you get a cool little, you know, band here to keep it closed. You also get a, a matching color ribbon. They come in like five or six different colors. I decided to get the lagoon color. Comes with a matching ribbon. So I wanted blue again. You know how my, you know, fantasy, you know, love interest with blue is. The next one I'll get maybe an orange one. They have them in four or five different colors, and. I got one for me and my wife, and I got my wife the hardcover version of it, and hers included, and they advertise this on the YouTube, if you search for this on YouTube, they advertise in the back, they have a product code that you can enter on the website and figure out where all the materials came from, because this is a 100% post-consumer uh, material recycled journal. The ink is made of soy ink, um, this is made of some other material, the, even the ribbon is recycled. Everything about this is recycled. They compare it to Moskin, Moskin, or whatever you want to call them, Moskin uh, journals. Um, hers came with a product code. Mine did not. I'm guessing it's because it's the soft one. Plus, it had, you know, how how uh, ecosystem journals started and all that. You can also enter, uh, register your journal so it's ever lost. They can go online and type in, you know, the code and know who to send it to or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool. The cool thing about this compared to Moleskine uh, Journal is that every single page is perforated. And I couldn't see it at first. I was kind of disappointed. But then I got to look a little harder, and yes, it is perforated every single page. So Michael Hyatt's um, suggestion is what you could do is go ahead and use it for tearing a piece out and scanning it in your copier and posting it to an Evernote, you know. If you want to do a journal like that, you can just write it down, tear it out, and scan it. You know, put it in Evernote forever to remember. And that way you don't have to worry about losing it or anything. Once again, these are perforated. I can't see the perforations, but I know they're there. I saw them the other day. It's, these are, this is a very nice, almost off-white color compared to my shirt. You can tell, you know, the, uh, the color of it. But, you know, pick up my, – my, basically my suggestion is pick up a journal, whatever it is, and make it, you know, a decent size. You don't want no – the little – Small ones that are pocket size. You want a decent size because you, you will if you can if you read a lot you take books with you different places and you'll definitely take this with you. One other thing I forgot to mention is it does have a little pocket in the back that you can use to put things in. Okay, so that's really cool. So these are ecosystem journals. This is my next journal after this one's completed. I'll be working on this one. And the reason I got this one now is because not only do I want to try it, uh, my wife's running out of a, her journal, so it's time to get her another one. But I wanted to give myself something to look forward to and make myself finish this one so I could go on to this one. Now, as far as this one goes, I've got probably another, I don't know, maybe 40 pages before I even get done with it. This is what it looks like at the end, okay? So I've got that many pages to work with. But it's just something to keep me going, you know. 
This is not a daily journal. This is not a chronicle of my life journal. This is for ideas and dreams and goals and to keep me focused on that vision of success in life. And I recommend that you do the same thing. It's very awesome to be able to look back on this stuff. You know, post some little, you know, like like the little insert there. This is proof, you know, that I did this and this is it encourages you to move forward in your guitar playing and your business and whatever you do in life. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Uh, it is now time for me to go ahead and wrap this thing up so that I can go on to my uh, guitar lesson for the day and also my um, practice session for the day. Thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to check out bluegrassguitaressentials.com. Sign up for the mailing list so that you can be updated on to all the you know, updates concerning the release of Bluegrass Guitar Essentials, the, the brand new course that is little by little coming together quite nicely, I must say. So thanks so much for watching that, and please subscribe. If you like this video, please click like. If it's meant something to you, please click like and share it with everybody you can. Put it on Facebook, put it on Pinterest, put it on wherever. Um, share this video wherever you think people will be benefit from it because that's what it's all about, helping each other to benefit, okay? Thanks so much. I'll see you guys on the next Hangout, the next video, whatever that may be. Today is actually Tuesday. I actually released a brand new video. Please check that one out. It's a video on a brand new lesson I do on Lonesome Fiddle Blues, step by step. And I've got a last-minute question here coming in. Uh, this question is from Randy Shardiger. Thanks so much for watching, Randy. Faithful, devoted Hangout fan. Hey, Eric, I'm catching on the video about 15 minutes behind you, but I wanted to say I always have a guitar in hand when attending these Hangouts. Just never have a camera handy. LOL. Great info, man. Next time I'll try to have a cam set up ahead of time. That would be awesome, Randy. We could sit down and play some guitar because, like I said, I want to do a lot more playing. A lot less talking, a lot more playing, you know. So I definitely want to do that. Thanks so much. Randy for that question and uh, so that's all I have uh, for today guys please check out Lonesome Fiddle Blues I'm sure you'll get a kick out of that video and how much uh, information is on just that one little song very cool picking exercise at the end of that video as well I'll see you guys next time whenever that may be thanks so much for watching here on the Guitarpreneur Hangout and please also be ready and stay tuned for the part two of the interview video with Robert Baker and myself this coming Saturday on all things Guitarpreneur. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you guys later, and God bless.